This podcast is sponsored by valleygivesback.org. Don't get spooked by planned giving. Name a Valley nonprofit in your estate plan and create a legacy that tells future generations what mattered to you. Making a gift that costs nothing during your lifetime is easy and revocable if things change. With a planned gift, you have the power to impact the Valley forever without affecting your current lifestyle. Your action will inspire others to make a difference in their own way. Remember the Valley. Ask your accountant, financial planner, or attorney about planned giving options. Plan now, give later, impact tomorrow. Learn more at valleygivesback.org. Hi, I'm Eugene of ValleyIndy.org. If you bear with me, in a few minutes you'll hear an interview with Alderman Phil Tripp, who is the Democratic nominee for mayor. He's attempting to unseat incumbent mayor David Cassetti in Ansonia. I also conducted a separate podcast interview with Mayor Cassetti. It's a companion piece to this interview. The candidates did not receive questions or topics in advance. Neither candidate brought anyone else into the interviews or my office. There were no pre-established rules of any kind. The content of these interviews has not been edited. I have inserted our sponsors' messages. I have inserted intro and outro music. And I'm recording this intro, to which you're now listening. I've tried to make the interviews as fair as possible. With that goal in mind, after each interview was completed, I listened to the interview and... If I felt something said by the candidate warranted a response from another person, a campaign, or a third party, I reached out, gave the people the opportunity to offer a short emailed response. With that being said, during my interview with Mr. Tripp, there's a part where he questions no-bid contracts for paving and catch basin work that he said always seem to go to the same contractor in Ansonia. This creates an appearance of impropriety, he says during the interview. He also said basically, that he does not believe any financial information coming out of City Hall, that the fund balance has been drained from $14 million to $4 million, and that, if elected, he'll request an immediate audit to look at city finances. In response to those comments, John Marini, the Ansonia Co- Corporation Council and a volunteer with the Cassetti campaign, excuse me, said, Though the audit is still ongoing, the undesignated fund balance is projected to end up being 8 to 9% of the overall city budget. That is within the city's target range and also higher than the undesignated fund balances of Ansonia's neighbor, neighbors, Derby, Seymour, and Shelton. It's unfortunate that Mr. Tripp doesn't take the time to examine the independent audits that the city already undergoes, which are performed by the same firm that audits the Board of Education. Chip has repeatedly claimed that he trusts those audits 100%. It's fairly clear at this point that Mr. Tripp doesn't believe the numbers because he doesn't want to believe them. As a sitting alderman, he is free to contact the city auditors and educate himself. With respect to contracts, Mr. Tripp voices no concerns when bids are waived by the Board of Education, but it's a political issue for him when they are waived for the same reasons of of efficiency and public safety by the city. It's a double standard and entirely disingenuous. Moving on, at one point during this podcast, uh, Phil and I talk about school regionalization And Phil says that the teachers union will have to approve any school regionalization plans should one be proposed. I wasn't sure about that myself as we were talking. After the interview, I I reached out uh, to the state and uh, other sources. And from what I understand, the unions don't have that type of say uh, in this process. So I reached out to Phil's campaign for clarification 
And they said uh, the voters make the ultimate decision. The regionalization committee determines whether this is feasible. The unions are the integral part of figuring out how to make this work. Without union cooperation, it doesn't work. Although the unions don't have the power of official approval, they do have to approve how the unions meld together. There are several unions from both cities that need to have a way to merge successfully since the pay and benefits may not be equal for both equal jobs. And Sonia teachers overall make less than a derby teachers. These are things that the unions would have to work out and the regionalization committee would be the best source of information on this. Okay, so without further ado, here is my interview with Phil Tripp, who is running for mayor in the city of Ansonia. Hey everybody, I'm Eugene Driscoll. Welcome to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indie Podcast. Today my guest is Ansonia Alderman Phil Tripp, a retired lieutenant colonel with the Army National Guard, who's running as a Democrat to challenge incumbent mayor David Cassetti in Ansonia. Cassetti, by the way, is a Republican. Thank you very much for coming here, Mr. Tripp. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene. I'm happy to be here, and uh, it's nice to be in your uh, podcast booth here. And uh, uh, Is it everything you thought it would be, the Valley <laughs> Indy office? We are no. in Ansonia. Yeah, we're we're no, Ansonia-based. No, no, very, very well appointed. <laughs> I, I like the Norman Rockwell of the public speaker there. That's what this is all about. Very God important. Bless. And uh, the people having a voice in their electoral process. So uh, it's a very nice uh, Norman Rockwell to have on the wall there. I'm very impressed. And uh, you, you're very well appointed here, Eugene. All right. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and then you'll hate me in five minutes. Probably, no, no. But, so I've sketched an outline of uh, sort of uh, questions I, I wanted mm-hmm. to ask. Sure. And I sort of broke them into three categories. Mm-hmm. I'm calling it up. With okay. two P's, UPP. Okay. First, I'm going to ask some of the unpleasant questions. Of course. Mainly mm-hmm. about uh, Facebook posts that yes, surfaced exactly. that you yeah. dealt with mm-hmm. uh, early on in this campaign mm-hmm. a few months back. Mm-hmm. Then I thought we would visit uh, your platform because that's important. People want to hear uh, your ideas for the city of Ansonia. Of course. Yeah. And then I'd like to close, if we have time, with a few mm-hmm. personal questions about where you grew mm-hmm. up and, and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. So I do have a tendency to talk too much, so I'm that's shooting fine. for 30 yeah. to 40 minutes. Here. Understood. Understood. Sound good to mm-hmm. you? Okay. So you're running as a Democrat. Yes, I am. Uh, but on the national level, mm-hmm. uh, you were very much a supporter of President Trump in 2016. In the past. In the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, President Trump is, of course, a Republican. Mm-hmm. And you often shared on your personal Facebook page yes. uh, memes and links to stories right. that I think could be any reasonable person would characterize uh, as right wing mm-hmm. or at least... Uh, against the values of the Democratic Party on the state and national level. I understand levels. what you're saying, yeah, yeah. And there was one meme, and it keeps popping up because mm. people who oppose your candidacy mm. keep bringing it up, mm. of, uh, uh, of something along the lines of illegal immigrants bring right. more disease to this country and TB, and when right. there's more illegal immigrants, there's more of these diseases. Right. Uh, a factoid or meme on Facebook that's been widely Understood. debunked. Understood. So uh, yeah. not to belabor the point here, but how do you counter the assertion to people who may not yo- know you that says, you know, Phil Tripp is not a Democrat. Right. He is a Trump Republican. He right. ran for state Senate as a Republican. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Now he's running for mayor as yeah. a Democrat, right. not out of principle, but out of political opportunism. Well, there's uh, that. And then there's how do you respond if you're well, a, if a Republican says, well, you betrayed us. You're on our side. And, and well, now you're not. <laughs> well, uh, I'd like to answer that at two levels. OK, um, to your point, I freely admit I've made mistakes among them, believing in and sharing anti-immigrant and conservative tropes of uh, former political colleagues. You know, just, quite, just quite try, si- to, try to speak into that. Right. Yeah. Quite right. simply, I was wrong, and I've apologized for it. I'm working every day to prove that, and I'm a different person. I have walked away from the ugliness of all that. Um, I, I've totally walked away from that. And, and on this, to your other point, uh, I didn't decide to run for mayor all by myself. Over the last two, three years, people throughout the city of Ansonia have come up to me and said, Phil, you're an alderman, you're president of the Board of Aldermen, you've done a really good job for that. Many of us see a need for change here in the city of Ansonia. So it wasn't just me on my own deciding I wanted to do this. There was large numbers of people that kept constantly tap- tapping, on me, tapping me on the shoulder saying, Phil, you really didn't need to run for mayor. And... You know, I'm talking about Democrats, independents, and Republican across the political spectrum have or have been asking me to um, uh, run for mayor, uh, and this has all been evolving over the last two years or so. And, and 
you know, I started looking at, you know, how I might come about and do that. And, you know, from my experience on the Board of Aldermen, you know, yes, I was Republican, but I worked also very well with, with Democrats on the Board of Aldermen. You all know who they are. Uh, I have friends across the aisle. And it just started, the way things started to unfold here in the city of Ansonia, um, I had a lot of disagreements and differences of opinion with the current administration. Do you mind if I interrupt for yeah. one yeah. second? Yeah. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I, I want to get to that, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to stick uh, for one second right. with uh, the field trip uh, you walked away from or those beliefs that you walked yes, I did. away yes, from. Sir. I just wanted to yeah. explore because the, the meme that I mentioned was only right. a year ago. Right. So uh, it's not ancient history. Right. I, I understand how that, did that. How did that? Well, uh, my, my thought process, it's not f like flicking on and off a light switch. It's an evolution and evolved. And as I, you know, was talking more and more of my Democrat friends, I, I start to see things differently. I freely admit I was wrong on that. And, and I've changed in my philosophy and the way I see things. And would, would you vote for Donald Trump again? No. Uh, in the next? Wow, no, okay. So right, that's yeah. a major yeah, yeah. shift and change. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Was there any one uh, experience or person or conversation? No, it's just, it, and I don't mean it, to belabor the point, but to me right. it's fascinating that that happened. Well, it's, it's just, for lack of a better word, the ugliness. A lot of the ugliness that's going on. So I, I've, I'm more of a moderate person than that, believe it or not. And people... Any and Sonia know that I'm a moderate and I'm working on becoming mayor as a moderate. And I want to, you know, obviously, um, I have people coming to my campaign, obviously, Democrats, independents, disaffected Republicans are supporting me in this campaign. So, I, you know, I'm obviously the Democrat nominee for mayor of the city of Ansonia, and obviously I'm getting a lot of support from the Democratic Party, but there are also disaffected Republicans and disenchanted Republicans that are coming to this campaign. So along with many independents. So it's, uh, as my first paper said, unity ticket, and, and this is a unity ticket because we're attracting people from all political parties. And, and then, people from all political parties are supporting, are supporting uh, my campaign. And then going back, uh, I didn't realize mm -hmm. that you were actually on the board of Alderman before uh, Mayor Cassetti. Yes, I was. You've been on since 2011. Yes, I, I was. I didn't realize that. Yes, I, thought I was. Yeah, for two together. years. Yes, I was. So was... Th was there, I'm trying to get, well, what happened between you and Mayor Cassetti? From what I read in our past stories and mm. our past reporting, mm. uh, it, it seemed maybe to uh, revolve around who was going to be Board of Aldermanic President. At least right. that's sort of the story that was said publicly. Take us behind closed well, doors. Right. Where, where, well, did it, I, where did it start to I, go if wrong? If I could just share with you, I'm going to use some of Ethan Fry's terminology. And when Ethan Fry, you know... Um, um, Ethan Fry is a former reporter from the Valley Indy. He'd still right, be here, right, but I couldn't right. afford him. We ran out of money. <laughs> okay. I'm not right, making right. jumps. No, no, saying. no, no. no. I, yeah. I, and you know, I just wanted he he tagged many years ago, or you know, I don't know, four or five years ago. He said the Trip Coalition and the Mayor's Coalition. Okay, and there, there was uh, and there was friction as to who would be the president of the board of Alderman. And, and many people saw that I had that two years of experience before he was elected. So many people felt that I naturally should be the president of Board of Alderman. But he wanted to um, have one of his folks as president of Board of Alderman as far back as 2013. But in 2013, a majority of Republicans voted for me, and I was the president of Board of Alderman. Concur so it's wrong for me, because I had assumed you were sort of a team Cassetti ally. Well, you were never actually... I don't want to say this. We're all, you know... We You're all in the got same party in 2013. All right, and I was a Repu registered Republican, and I worked for the party. I worked for the team. Okay, but you know, as with any football team or team, there started to be division, division, and um, I, you know, for the first two years, kind of went along with things, but come around 2015, I started to have some reservations. Yeah, I went through the election process. But after that, the divisions started to become more pronounced. And what were some of the divisions? Like, how did it start? Um, uh, Was it personalities? Or? Uh, no, no. I, I don't want to say this. Um, he feels very strongly about doing things a certain way. And I'm a consensus person, and I like to bring in opinions from a lot of different people. But as Mr. Vaccaro, his president board of Alderman said, he said in one of your, uh, some of your literature, past articles, past articles he, Mr. Ricardo said, 
We want people on the board and board on, on boards and commissions that think like the mayor. That is a direct quote. To me, that's a very dangerous thing. A group think, everybody thinks the same. I was very uncomfortable with that. All right. Okay. You have to have diversity, not just ethnically, racially, but also diversity of thought. And when you only have people that just think like one person, I think that's very dangerous. And that's where we started to have our divide. Now, there's other key turning points. Uh, basically, the termination of his comptroller, Mr. Bill Nimmons. Okay. Mr. That Bill was Nimmons, a major that was major. eruption. That was huge. Okay. All right. Mr. Bill Nimmons is a very, very everybody knows, a very honorable man, uh, very well known in the city, has many humanitarian awards, think good works he's done for the community, and obviously he's a retired bank vice president, and he got the budget and the finances of the city straightened out for the current mayor. All right. But once he did that, the mayor wanted to start moving in a different direction with city finances. Mr. Nimmons would not go along with that. So Mr. Uh, current mayor showed him the door. Okay. And then what was the last straw? Or was that the last well, straw? Because well, I thought it was education funding, well, but I Well, could... I'm just leading you, you know, yep. there was, you know, small breaks, small breaks, and then the big ones. Firing Bill Nimmons was huge to me. All right. Very honorable man, very straightforward, very financially honest. Okay. But what really snapped it, what really snapped it for me was illegally taking $600,000 from Board of Education. And now that that lawsuit has run its full course of 14 months, I can now say fully that the money was illegally taken because basically the courts, city had to return the $600,000 plus penalties going forward of $270,000 every year. So put back all the $600,000 and you had to tack another two hundred seventy thousand dollars onto that every year going forward. The city, in your mind and on paper, lost that lawsuit. In my and, mind, yes. Yeah. I mean, lawyers can you know spin it, there was spin some, it there was the way some, they want. It got a little well, it was negotiated. It was uh, what's the word they use? Agreed, or I, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know their legal term. Neither am I. All right, but my point is, to me, it was a loss. All right, because they had to put all the money back. Now, if you have to pay a penalty, a judgment penalty, to me, that right there that says you lost. And they had to pay a penalty to me of $270,000 going forward every year, which is he'd left it alone, he would have never had to pay that $270,000. All right. So when, when that vote was taken, I was the only one to vote no. All the other aldermen there voted yes. I was the only one to vote no. I told them they were wrong. I were told them violating state law. And the answer was, well, we'll let the lawyers figure it out. Well, the lawyers did figure it out over 14 months. And you know, they lost. And now, I saw a, 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 a Democratic Party uh, yesterday, I think, right. released a video saying right. that uh, as a result of that, right. uh, taking away the money, we right. had overcrowded classrooms here in Ansonia, well, and then the Teachers Union has talked about it. You just, you just took the it. words out of my mouth. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> the money is one thing, but the chaos that it caused in our school system for our children here in the school system, especially the elementary schools and the middle school, you had 17 teachers laid off which to your point caused the overcrowding in the room. Class size went up from 24 to 32 children in the class. I mean, it caused chaos in the school system. I'm told you had teachers crying in the hallways, just teachers calling out sick, just the human toll of chaos in our school system for our young children, the teachers was to me inexcusable. All right, so that's really when I really said, you know, I'm not part of this team. I need to start looking for another way to serve the people of the city of Ansonia. Did you ever consider primarying against the mayor, staying as a Republican? And, no, And this no, will be my last question, my, let's get to your, your My platform. thought process was either independent, but then I started to talk to my friends in the Democratic Party, and they brought me into the party, and, uh, well, I am where I am now. So. Was there any one particular person in the Democratic Party who, who reached out to you? Because when I heard that, oh, yeah. the Democrats, right. Uh, right. you know, right. I, I haven't been watching uh, Ansoni as right. closely as I'd like right. to. I yeah. don't go to yeah. meetings. Yeah. But when I heard that the Democrats nominated right. Phil Tripp, right. like right. many people, I'm sure, who right. aren't intimately involved, I had right. to pick my... Right. My, my jaw up right. off the uh, off the ground. Well, so once, was there once again? It was, it was a you know it wasn't a like flicking a light switch right. off and on. But was there it, one person who who? Well, I, I want to say multiple or? people. Okay. You know, a, a lot of people. Um, Tara Cross in the town committee chair. Uh, I talked to him a lot during his campaign two years ago. Uh, Joe Gennetti, uh I've worked with him very well a lot in the past. Uh, on the Board of Aldermen, and him and I were, you know, uh, voted together on a lot of items for the Board of Aldermen. Uh, 
when I, my last two years as president of the Board of Aldermen. Um, I, I don't want to leave people out, but uh, well, I it's my fault I ask. Yeah. So. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, you know, I, I talked to Kara Rochelle a lot during her campaign, and you know, I was liking a lot what she had to say. So all these people, I had conversations, very deep personal conversations with these people, and you know, I said, well, you know, a lot of these people have moderate views like I do. So my mindset started to change, you know. So it's just a matter of time before I change my party registration. And uh, I, I told those folks that I'd be very interested in running for mayor on their ticket. And then so, you changed party in, in May? Right, in May. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then, and this is a, a stupid question, so mm -hmm. forgive me, but uh, do you give up your alderman seat now since you're running no, for no, mayor? No, is that, no, no. There's a chance you, you could still... No, 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 or, no. I'm, I'm not running for alderman. You're not running. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Okay, you know, um, my last meeting as alderman in this term would be November, the second Tuesday in November. Okay. And then my term as alderman, you know, I've given up. I'm not running for two offices. I'm only running for mayor of the city of Ansonia. And my alderman uh, seat term, if you will, expires, I think, the last day of November. And that will complete eight years of service to the people of the city of Ansonia as all of it. Now, I remember seeing you at the very beginning of mm -hmm. your uh, term. Mm -hmm. I remember you were at a police commission meeting. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it stayed with me. Mm -hmm. And you were there just to bring up some neighborhood concerns mm -hmm. from people uh, you represent yes, yeah. in whatever ward at the police commission meeting. Yeah, so yeah. what would... What was sort of, yeah, this is a, a puffy question, but what the heck, it, what was your favorite thing to do as alderman? Why did you enjoy it? Why did you stick with it uh, all well, these years? Well, if you look at my life, my life has always been about public service. Serving the nation in the military, I was overseas in Germany for three years, and then the uh, best thing I ever did was join the National Guard right here at the National Guard Armory in Ansonia. And you, you get a feeling about public service and almost it gets to a point where you feel you can never do enough. And I'm sure my firefighter friends feel the same way. You're in Sony Volunteer Fire Department. My gosh, they stay with it until, you know, hmm. they're in their 50s and 60s, some of them, you know. And, and I've been to some of the retirement dinners for the old timer nights and they still want to come out and be near the fire truck. So it gets to a point in your life where you feel you can never do your, enough. So that's why I did my 30 years in the National Guard until they said, Phil, I'm sorry, but you have to retire next month. You know, so I is was. Is that how it works? They, they yeah. tell you. Oh yeah. No, you can only okay. stay in for so long. And then that's it. Yeah. Okay. You know, like, you know, you have advance warning notice, but you know, it's just there's only a set amount of time you can stay in. But to my point, you can never serve enough. You know, you know, many of us. Um, so when I retired from the National Guard, I started looking for another way to serve. Got involved in my local community. There was a zoning variance issue that one of my neighbors asked me to write a petition about. Somebody wanted to subdivide a lot and put up a house three feet away from his house, his bedroom window. And I started working with him, started filling out a, uh, a petition, if you will. And we petitioned the Board of Allman, and that person didn't get to subdivide their property and build uh, the house three feet away from Joe Arnone's house. So, And I got to know a lot of people in the second ward that way. And there were other issues that came up, but just... Uh, public service. I enjoy public service. I enjoy serving the people. I've done it at the federal level, the state level, and now I look forward to doing it at the city level as long as I can. I, I truly enjoy public service and, and serving now the people of the city of Ansonia. So if elected, what do you see as the single most important issue, the most pressing issue facing the city of Ansonia? Well, right now, the, sure issue, talking to right now the issue that affects everything is our financial situation. Uh, I've had several people reach out to me and say, Phil, what are you going to do about the financial situation? And one person that's in the banking industry said, would you do a, an audit your first day in as mayor of the city of Ansonia? Absolutely. Uh, I would ask for help from Bill, Bill Nimmons, and I would ask him. Let uh, me just inter with this audit because the audits are done on an annual basis. Right, are you talking right. about a forensic audit? Uh, forensic audit—that's a loaded term. I, I don't want to use that right. word because it implies things. Mm -hmm. But I want to do an audit and find out exactly where the city stands on day one. Because, uh, for example, all right, they talk about the police station, but we still have not paid for that building. We've acquired it by eminent domain. We have the keys to it, but we still have not paid for that police station. Now I'm hearing a number of $1.8 million, it's in court, and now that process has been extended past election day. So we still don't know the final deposition of the outcome between straw management 
and the city of Ansonia. And this is all open source. Anybody listening to my voice can go to worldwidewebct.gov, judicial and civil court, and type in Shaw Management City to of Ansonia case file, and yep. case file, and you will see that it's been extended into November now. So that's not done. And the same thing with they're talking about the sports complex across the street. Olson Ol Drive. Olson yes. Drive. Okay. We have requested. Now, the the management or whatever, the control of it being moved from the Ansonia Housing Authority to City Hall, that's a management thing, but you still don't own the property. City of Ansonia had to put in a request paperwork to HUD through Hartford to Chicago, Illinois, for permission to acquire that property. That process we won't know about until, until December. All right, But what I've been told by multiple people is HUD hardly ever gives up that property. Mm -hmm. So, you know... A lot of people are talking, but there's no money being spent because it's my personal opinion, the city doesn't have any money. The reserve fund, as you know about, and you've reported on. From a downgraded, there's a credit rating down. Well, has almost been drained. Uh, my number is $10 million. From $14 million to under $4 million in the reserve fund has been drained to that point, a point at which Standard & Poor's punished the city of Ansonia by downgrading our bond rating. Their words, not mine, they specifically said that the level of ants, they said, specifically said that Ansonia's economic development is not keeping up with the level of spending and it's creating a void. So, Standard & Poor's is not too comfortable with the, that. The grand list hasn't grown enough to replenish to, the fund balance. And the keep up it. with the level of spending that we're at right now. So, I mean, they're already talking about making changes at the transfer station, possibly the uh, transfer station being closed down is a possibility. Uh, I'm also hearing about some reductions at the library as well. So, you know, these are cutbacks in city services. At the same time, the taxes went up each of the last two years for 90% of Ansonia residents. And I have a, a newsletter coming out within the next 48 hours. It will have a color map of where those taxes went up across the city of Ansonia and how much those taxes went up. Now, okay, so... It, just I mean, one it's last thing, I'm Yeah, pleased. it's just, it's hard to talk about some of these things uh, in depth because Cassetti, the mayor Cassetti's not here. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, you say your one last thing. Because what I want to hear yeah. is, okay, those are the right. problems. Right, yeah. You're hitting uh, right. the opposition on the head, but what right. are you going to do? Just, just one last thing. Yeah, go ahead. I go did ahead. not vote for either one of those last two budgets that raised taxes. I did not vote for either one of them because I, I felt the spending was out of line. Uh, too much money spent in the mayor's office, which I've disagreed with, and other big pay raises that have happened in Sonia. So I, you know, I will take the paycheck as it is, whatever the mayor's paycheck is. I will take that. I'm not looking for anything extra. Um, you know, I will be happy with the paycheck, and that's it. You know, um, I'm not looking for pay raises or anything else that's going on there currently in Sonia City Hall. And I've made mention of that in past op eds. Okay, so. Let's say, or maybe I'll, I'll uh, so basically you said the most pressing issue is the finances. You don't trust the yeah. numbers coming out of City Hall. Exactly. You want an audit and you yes. have questions. You, you, you sort of don't uh, believe what you're being told by uh, the local government. So uh, let's tackle, I mean, you're, you've been on the board of Alderman since 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, across the street from where we are mm -hmm. at 158 Main Street, right. there's the ATP Palmer building. Yes, you are I correct. Always, I always get confused as to mm -hmm. what they're called. Good point. Uh, then you have Chromium, Chromium Processing Lab AT, is ATP right there. ATP Palmer Building and right next to that, yes. And then uh, uh, over uh, across the street down the road a little bit, and Sonia Copper and Brass, mm -hmm. properties that have been sitting mm -hmm. Uh, stagnant right, for right. years. Yep. I know uh, when we launched, Mayor Delavope's administration was trying to get something done with mm -hmm. these properties. Mm -hmm. Mayor Cassetti came in. He's mm -hmm. been trying to do something mm -hmm. with these properties. I don't know uh, what the problem is or what the holdup is. Mm -hmm. They're obviously... Mm -hmm seem like complicated uh, arrangements or mm -hmm. deals or properties, mm -hmm. what would you do or what could you do that hasn't been done uh, to those properties? How would you get the deal done okay. and get them developed? I just want to back up very quickly for 20 seconds, all right? A local developer was given a four-year option to develop, to develop the AT Palmer building. Given a four-year option, allowed to use office space in that building, Never exercised the option four years. We lost four years on that EP, ATP pump. Was that, are you talking recently? Is that the... We, just expired okay. in the last six, eight months. Just, just, sure just expired in the last six, eight months. The... Okay. Uh, local developer that was given a four-year option to develop the ATP Palmer building okay. and did not, you know, make use of that four-year option, exclu exclusive four-year option that he had for four years, did not, did not make use of that, even though he was, he was given the building or 
under con- well, he would have had he would have been able to buy the building for a very good price. He had the use of office space in there for his offices or site office, whatever, but never acted on that for your option. Is what we need to do, okay? Uh, my opponent's current corporation counsel said in one of your literature, one of your articles back in 2013, that he said, quoting him, that Ansonia had a small town mentality when it came to economic development. Mm-hmm. All right. We need to broaden our scope. We need to market Ansonia to bigger markets. Uh, developers from Boston all the way down to New York, Stanford and New York, who are accustomed to doing big projects. Open it up to competitive bidding. Competitive bidding. We need to get back to competitive bidding on everything. Road projects, building projects, catch basin work projects. Right now, street work and road work is give, being given out without bids. But to get back to the bigger picture of economic development, we need to market the city to larger developers that can come in and redevelop an ATP Palmer building and, like you said, the Chrome building right next to that. All at once, all together. Redevelop an entire city block. But we're obviously not talking to the people that are capable of doing that. You know, we're, we're talking to smaller companies that apparently uh, aren't capable of doing it or are not inclined to do it right now. We need to find some hungry people that want to come in and redevelop an entire city block at a time in the city of Ansonia. Now, we've talked about the brownfields over here at uh, Ansonia Copper and Brass, Mm -hmm. you know, over there. Uh, It's either Chevron or British Petroleum or one of their two. They've been bought out, but they are still on the hook for remediation of that brownfield and the contamination there. So we have them, the need to remediate that, and the federal government, there's funding for that. There's a lot of funding for brownfields to clean that up so we can market that. But it's languished. We've talked about it, but nobody's really bitten into it to go after those folks. I I don't know why. Maybe they have other distractions. I I, I can't talk for them. Just going back to these buildings across the street when you're Mm -hmm. saying we need to bring in a developer who is willing and, and more importantly has the ability right. to tackle a big yeah. project. Yeah. I guess in, in terms of how do you bring that in, though? Because I would assume that some of that, they've had to market the city or these mm. properties to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe go, I mean, I wasn't here before 2009, but right, right, right. what specifically would you do? Have you, do you have any examples that where it worked in other towns, perhaps, <sighs> that you can model? This podcast is sponsored by valleygivesback.org. Don't get spooked by planned giving. Name a Valley nonprofit in your estate plan and create a legacy that tells future generations what mattered to you. Making a gift that costs nothing during your lifetime is easy and revocable if things change. With a planned gift, you have the power to impact the Valley forever without affecting your current lifestyle. Your action will inspire others to make a difference in their own way. Remember the Valley. Ask your accountant, financial planner, or attorney about planned giving options. Plan now, give later, impact tomorrow. Learn more at valleygivesback.org. This um, after? I, I didn't bring that list with me, but there's definitely other towns that mm-hmm. have been done very well at, at urban redevelopment. Um, I, I don't have it at the tip of my tongue right now. Um, you know, so many things. And then how about, that, that's fine. Uh, how about in terms of you brought up uh, some employees uh, in City Hall, what staff changes would you make? You implied that there's uh, some uh, excess salaries or positions there over have in been City Hall. There very substantial pay raises. Uh, I listed that in a previous op-ed. Uh, you have it, you know. If you were elected, though, right. I mean, would, would, the, would you keep the economic development director? Is that position? No, no, no. Like, it, what it's would you... very traditional. It's very d- traditional that when a new mayor comes in, you have a change in the mayor's staff. Okay. Uh, so that includes... Um, uh, economic development director, grant writer, is not a union person, all mm-hmm. right? Um, uh, and when a new mayor comes in, that position is traditionally changed. Um, would you keep that position? Like in Derby, they, they made it into something else, but would you at least keep the position? Oh, e- economic. Well, we definitely need to have economic development. We definitely need to have a grant writer because okay. the city of Ansoni received millions of dollars in grants from Hartford, Connecticut. So you need somebody to somebody to um, uh, do those grants so we can keep that, you know, all that money coming from uh, the state of Connecticut and then Hartford. I've, maybe it was in one of your submissions, the Economic Development Commission, you want to see 
because uh, I guess it's stagnant now from what I, they I think you their meetings. published. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, uh, I'm on the email because I'm an alderman and I keep hearing Economic Development Commission canceled. Economic Development Commission. Uh, I, I uh, you know, and I talk to people all over town. I mean, I see people in BJ's. I used to see people in Big Y, but Big Y is not there anymore. I can't go in there. Um, and I talk to people in the grocery store, BJ's, you know, Dunkin' Donuts. I talk to people all over, and I keep bumping into a friend of mine who's on this economic development petition. He says, Phil, they keep canceling our meetings. We haven't met in six months. You know, that, those, those are Ansonia folks that have a lot to say, and, and they, they know what's going on in Ansonia, and they have a lot of great ideas. They know it'll work. But once again, it's like City Hall, there's a small group of people that want to be making the decision-making process, not even the alderman sometimes, going back to the last budget process, which I totally agreed with. Why do we need to hire a neighboring mayor and pay him $30,000 to do the Board of Alderman's job? When I was the president of the Board of Alderman, we started scrubbing that budget in January of 17, and we worked it right through until June of 2017. We worked that budget for six months, interviewing every six, single board, um, excuse me, uh, department, fire department, police department, board of education, and we asked them where they could cut. We, were gonna, we told them how much they needed to cut, but they said, you cut it where you feel you can. You know, we really need to do this and keep the budget, you know, and we passed that budget without a tax increase, without a tax increase. So um, using not a huge amount of money from the reserve fund either. So I've heard that, and I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, please go ahead. I, I've seen the sort of noticing a trend in mm -hmm. some of the Valley towns, mm -hmm. uh, in Derby specifically, which is basically a sister city of mm -hmm. Ansonia uh, that I cover. Uh, there, there, politicians have been saying in public, mm -hmm. not pol well, yeah, politicians, that the days of these 0% tax increases are, are over mm -hmm. in economically distressed cities because mm -hmm. we just can't uh, uh, keep up. Right, right, right. Uh, the cost to do government uh, is going up mm -hmm. uh, every year. Mm -hmm. And one thing that has been uh, thrown at uh, the Democrats this year is that, well, they're going to get in. They can't wait to raise taxes. No, that's they're, not true. Yeah, talk to me about that. Well, do you, you think see, it's, is it is it possible anymore to, to do these zero uh, let, me, let me just put it this way, Eugene. The Republican Party does not own fiscal conservatism, okay? You know, I mean, fiscally moderation is what we need, okay? And people that are in City Hall right now, they can call themselves Republicans, but in no way can they call themselves fiscal conservative. The, the, the current administration have been the biggest spenders in the history of the city of Ansonia. Like I said, they drained $10 million out of the reserve fund, spent it, all right? We had two tax increases in the last two years, one from reevaluation and one was a half mil tax increase. They spent all that money as well. Although these were the arguments that have been made against uh, the Cassetti administration every two years now right. and it hasn't worked. How do you, if that's the case, how come voters aren't buying that? Well, they've seen their taxes go up. You know, it, it, when, you, when you live by the mantra of taxpayer, 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 and then you have substantial uh, tax increases the last two years running. Now they try to say, well, that was reevaluation. But if reevaluation pushes up the price of houses, okay, then you should be adjusting the mill rate to keep things level. They didn't do that. They let, they let um, reevaluation give them a back built in tax increase and more revenue to spend. And they spent every penny of it. Um, where would you cut? Where because sometimes I sit at these meetings. I mean, I haven't done an Ansonia necessarily, well, but you see, there's every time someone tries to cut something, there's a million other well, reasons I, why you cannot cut this I, particular thing. I'm glad thing. you brought that up, Eugene. There's, there's two areas that I'm going to go after immediately. We've seen an incredible amount of paving, 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 and road work. All right, and it's just it's it's eating up in millions of dollars in our Ansonia city budget. Paving roads. Uh, I mean, I could take you through the city and, and pave roads. I've seen roads being paved that many folks believe they didn't even need paving, and they got paved anyways. Uh, so that's a great concern. Uh, catch basins. I was knocking on doors up on the hilltop, and I'm walking through the street, and I see all these catch basins being replaced, and the catch basins being pulled out of the ground look better than the ones around my street. And they're is being this replaced. DPW doing this? Or? No. Oh. This is being done by a local construction company. And I have you know, other folks telling me that you know, that used to be something that if there was a bad catch basin, public works employees would replace that catch basin. Now, we're already, you know, we already have these public works employees on staff. They're getting paid a paycheck. We're paying their medical benefits. Let them do the work. But for some reason... 
All that catch base and work is being farmed out to just one local construction company. It, it's one. Everything's one. Uh, one local construction company to do local paving and catch pace and work, one local company to do the blight remediation work. It's, it's very curious. That it gives the appearance of impropriety when you have just one company doing all the paving, one company doing catch base and work, and one person doing blight remediation. It, it's the appearance of impropriety. As I see it, how about uh, we'll get back to that? Well, actually, let me let me ask you now because as, as I'm saying that, my heart is breaking. Mm -hmm. As you're saying that, because mm -hmm. I, I tried to get you and Mayor Cassetti uh, to do a de debate together, mm -hmm. uh, I offer like October 10th to have like to have Mayor Cassetti in the room, okay. so you could ask him these questions right, right, uh, right. directly. Right, right, because right. I'm in a position where I can't really uh, mm -hmm. respond; I can just mm -hmm. listen. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I understand like uh, uh, your campaign said. Uh, decline, but wanted to do something at the high school. Absolutely, uh, put something together. Absolutely, but which I understand, and, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, as we're sitting here, I, I just have to ask, why did the campaign wait until they had an offer from me? Mm -hmm. uh, you had an offer on the table to right, do right, a debate, right. Right, 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 right. and then the campaign is like, well, well we want to do this other debate mm -hmm. uh, because as just a reporter for twenty years now, mm -hmm. usually to put together a debate. Mm -hmm. You, know, you start that work in August. Right, 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 right. And right. it occurred to me, like, well, if you were serious about doing a debate, mm -hmm. a true debate, mm -hmm. uh, with Mayor Cassetti, where you gentlemen could go face to face and ask and answer these questions that you're right, putting right. out there, right, right. Uh, why didn't you start working on that months ago? Why was it until I said, hey, because I, I offered because it didn't seem like anybody else was. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, to be very honest with you, you know. When you're putting together a political campaign, we have a lot of new people, a lot of new faces. Uh, I'm a new face, obviously, bringing in all kinds of people. Um, you know, obviously, I'm the nominee of the Democratic Party. Obviously, a lot of Democrat faces, but we have a lot of independents and even Republicans helping my campaign. So there's a no lot of new faces uh, in all different, and you know, it's just a matter you've got to put together so many things so quickly, so fast fundraising, organizational strategy, what you're going to put together. You know, it's, you know, um, the debate, you know, because everything was taking up so much time, we didn't get to the thought of debate. But, you know, looking at your no Norman Rockwell picture there, you know, that speaking was in a public forum. And we felt that it was very important, just like Mayor Della Volpe gave at the time Mr. Cassetti a debate at Ansonia High School in the auditorium, in front of right. several hundred yeah, and took, Sony residents. That took months to put right. together. Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Um, but, you know, a lot of seniors look forward to that. Uh, it involved the high school students, okay? Um, you know, we had people that wanted to help and volunteer with that effort. Um, there were other people that uh, voiced uh, an offer to um, host a debate, uh, teachers' union and others, and... Uh, uh, the mayor flatly turned down now several of them. Now there's a, a yeah, basically a log jam where neither side will. Okay, right. that, that uh, how about school regionalization? Right. Because uh, who cares about the, the Valley and these offer for a debate? Okay. That doesn't really matter. Yeah. In the, school in the regionalization. Big, school yeah. regionalization. That's yeah. a major issue. Involves right. Derby as well. Yes, it does. Where yeah. do you stand? My, my hypothesis right, right, on right. this is that, uh, and, and I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, is that the Ansonia uh, school contingent of professionals mm -hmm. and maybe the Board of Ed mm -hmm. and, and administrators aren't keen on mm -hmm. these discussions taking place. Okay. Uh, where Derby seems to be a little more uh, open to it. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's just from talking to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so wh where do you stand on that? A am I right? Am I wrong? Do you th or am I? Let me just, I'll tell you where Phil Tripp is coming from. Okay. That's what I want to hear. And, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm a person. It's all about process. There is a process for everything. There's a process for doing a budget, all right? And if you just do the process, things work out. And I proved that in the, for the 2017-2018 budget, all right? We did the process from January through June. It's a lot of work, but you get consensus. You get everybody working together, and you get a budget that everybody agrees with. Now, the same thing for regionalization. It's a process. You have a uh, regionalization committee, joint committee between Ansoni and Derby. Mayor of Ansonia appoints so many people, Mayor of Derby and Sony, and they have a discussion, and they move a valley term, they move the football forward, <laughs> okay? So they have to have discussions, and then they get a plan, all right? Um, 
Now, here's what happens once they approve it. It has to go, it has to be voted on by at least four groups of people that I'm aware of. Now, to those people listening to my voice, I, I'm not intentionally leaving anybody out, but the only four I can think of off the top of my head right now immediately, it has to be voted on by the Ansoni Teachers Union. They have to approve it. It has to be voted on by the Derby Teachers Union. They have to approve it. It has to be voted on by the voters of the city of Ansonia and the voters of the city of Derby. All four groups have to approve of it. If just one says no, it shoots down the whole thing. And that's what's happened in other communities. And I think that's what happened when Ansonia and Derby tried to do it many years ago. I've heard, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, right, do, right. do you support the process? I or? support the process. Okay, because I've heard, you know, the mayor put too many of his own people on there. That's That was a complaint. Where Yeah, once again, getting back to why I okay. separated from the mayor, because he likes his people in all positions. Okay, okay that's but you you support they should do the they should study it and they should study absolutely. Okay, I am gotcha. all for process for the city budget for regionalization. Do the process. Go forward with the process. You have a, a meeting of citizens and volunteers, and they work it through, and they get to a certain point. And if there's consensus between the two halves of the committee uh, between Derby and Ansonia, then you move it forward. All right, and then it goes for those f at least four votes that I talked about. There might be a couple of other unions involved that they don't, they don't come to mind. I think right the aldermen might have to actually vote oh, yeah, to yeah, send it as well. Right, you are correct. You know, yeah. it, the, the aldermen have to vote yes before it gets on the ballot. Do you think it, do you think it'll ever go anywhere, though? You know, That's um, a lot of agreement I, that has to take I place. I do not want to restrict anything, and, and there's one other thing going on. Now, there, there's been talk, and um, I, I was a proponent of... Uh, the Board of Education for the city of Ansoni is in a process right now for a new middle school, mm -hmm. all right? And I had to fight, fight very vigorously on the Board of Aldermen back in February and March to just get, um, at the time, Assistant Superintendent of Schools, uh, Joe DeBacco heard, and uh, a gentleman from the state of Connecticut named Costas. He's the man that hands out the money for new schools. He hands out millions of dollars for new schools and state funding. Uh, they both came down. Finally, they got the opportunity to speak at the end of, I believe, the March Board of Albany meeting. All right. And he basically laid out that reimbursement off the top of my head. If the city of Ansoni goes it alone, off the top of my head, 75, 80 percent reimbursement with the city chipping in 15 or 20 percent off the top of my head. If that middle school is used as part of a regional school system or it's a regional school between Derby and Ansonia, for example, the state reimbursement can be 90%. So, I mean, it makes a new middle school very affordable and very doable with the help of the state of Connecticut. So there are certain incentives for regionalization, but once again, I'm just saying what's available, mm -hmm. but still, I'm a person that's all about process, and the process needs to be followed and, and let the process work itself out, not have somebody strong-arming what people are doing or stacking the deck, if you will. And it seems like... Uh, uh Although Mayor Cassetti did was criticized at the beginning for putting quote his people on there, mm -hmm. it seems like that group is working coherently. From well, what they're, they're I've, coalescing, they're working. I don't with know if Derby. coherently is the right verb, yeah. but you know what I'm saying. Yes, yes, yes. They seem like they're they're doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. No, yeah. The, I mean, and, and they're doing the process, you know, um, and, and that's a good thing, you know. Let the process go forward. Um, I'm not up on the day to day of it. Uh, I haven't been to a, a, a meeting of that group in a while. Yeah, we're either, both so. guilty of that. Right. So. so, all right. Uh, so let's move on. Let's talk about a little bit because it's been 43 minutes. Yeah, which uh, I'm 13 minutes over. But just to sort of uh, close this out. Yes, sir. Uh, you were born in Ansonia. You're from here originally. Actually, or? I was born in New Haven, Connecticut. Okay. Uh, I was raised as a young child in Hamden. I'm a product of public schools. And then at the age of... Brothers, sisters, things like I that? I have one sister. Uh, she okay. lives in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, a teacher. From uh, yes, Harvard. yes. Okay. She was a special ed teacher in the Middlebury, Southbury Regional School District. Uh, matter of fact, um, I was in a meeting at the Board of Ed, and uh, one of the teachers tapped me on the shoulder. She says, Trip, are you Jillian Tripp's brother? And I said, yes. Oh, she did this and this with my son. And, you know, so it's nice to hear something like that. You know, it's a human interest story, and mm -hmm. it just makes you feel good. So... She was a special ed teacher for 10 years up in the Middlebury, Southbury district. She worked, it's a very tough career, very high burnout rate, special ed sure, teachers. Sure, yeah. And uh, I mean, she would literally lock herself in her bedroom on Sundays and just do reports, 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 reports. There's so many reports in that profession. So I just have a massive amount of respect, not just for special ed teachers, but all teachers because of that. And then where'd you go to high school? 
I hammed in high school. When did you graduate? Class of 76. And what did you do after high school? Well, we're going I, with Phil Tripp, this is your life in three yeah. minutes or less. Okay, just, just very quickly. I actually graduated high school a half year early and I went straight in the Army. So I enlisted before the age of 17 and I went into the Army when I was uh, 17, eight, I'm sorry, 18 years old in three months. Why? I, I just wanted to move on from high school. I wanted to serve my country and get out there and do something. So that's. Uh, and then, excuse my ignorance, but what year is that? We're talking. 1976. Uh, in 76, right, you said. Right. Okay, then you get out and then you join the Guard in like 81, would, 82? Right. Well, um, I was uh, 76 to 79 in Grafenwehr. I was in Grafenwehr, Germany, the largest military training ground in Western Europe. Uh, I was in the Army Reserve for one year. Okay, and then I joined the. Uh, uh, National Guard at the Ansonia Armory right here in uh, Ansonia. And had you moved to Ansonia at that time, or that uh, just no? I was still. Was I was okay. going to college at the University of New Haven, so I was bouncing around, shall we say? Okay, and that started a thirty-four <laughs> year career. Thirty years. Thirty years. Four, you know, sorry. Regular Army not, three, I... Army Reserve one, and then thirty years in National Guard. And so, how did you end up in Ansonia? Um, my life has been in and out of the valley all my life. Uh, I spent all my summers at a ch as a child in McConney's Grove, right off oh, Route no 34 kidding. on the yeah. Zatonic River, you know, fishing for sunnies and perch, water skiing. I mean, things were crazy back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, speed boats going up and down the river. I'm sure people my age will remember all that, you know. So I spent all my summers there. Um, and uh, just something's popping out of my head. But um, uh, long well, story short, when I finished up my three uh, – with my – year in Iraq, I came back and I said, I, I've been divorced. I was divorced for quite a while. Went to Iraq, came back, and I had the down payment for a house. And I said, where do I want to live the rest of my life? And the first thing I thought about is my good friends at the Ansoni Armory, the people that are here. I knew them to have as friendly, big-hearted people that live here in Ansoni, and that's why I chose. Unfortunately, I wasn't born in Ansonia, but I chose to move to Ansonia, to live in Ansonia, and raise my family in the city of Ansonia. And you're a father of five, right? You're, you're <laughs> yes, I've had three daughters graduate from uh, Ansonia High School. And believe it or not, currently my youngest son is in elementary school in Ansonia. And I have two grandchildren currently. One grandchild is in kindergarten with the Ansonia school system, and another grandchild is in uh, pre-K with the Ansonia school system. All right, Mr. Tripp, those are all my questions. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to add that perhaps I didn't ask you? Or where can people go if uh, they want to find out more information about uh, you and well, your campaign? Our, our, our headquarters is right down here below us. We're right here on Main Street. On what's Main the, Street. What's the address here? Uh, we're at 158 Main 150. Street. I think we're 150. Yeah, what are you at, the old pawn shop out there? Is yes, there? Yeah, yes, okay. yeah. Old, We've cleaned old, up a lot. The so. old pawn <laughs> shop, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very welcoming, and uh, so they're welcome. To, we... Uh, we have ours um, every afternoon from 3 until 9, and I think we're going to push it early. So 12, there should be somebody there always from 12 noon until 9 at night, and we're open on the weekends from uh, uh, 9 in the morning until uh, 9 at night. So a lot going on, very busy, and it's going to be a lot busier. The tempo is going to pick up a lot. Uh, I just say um, the best thing I ever did in my life, besides marrying my wife, current wife, is uh, living here in the Anso city of Ansonia. It's just a great small New England town, city. Uh, we are the city of Ansonia, but you know it has that hometown feeling. Uh, everybody's very friendly, and we all look out for each other. Uh, great volunteer fire department, arms, uh, all. S the sense of volunteerism here in Ansonia is, is, is incredible. That's what I'm always impressed by, and the big hearts of the people of the city of Ansonia. All right, sir, thank you very much for taking the oh, time. No, thank you for having me. Readers are in the opens each day. Online clickbait, a furry way. It's free information here to stay. Not even hookers give it away. Advertising, much as.
metastasizing, neutral shrinking, constant attrition. We'll ride the dinosaur. We'll ride the dinosaur. Yeah, ride the dinosaur. 